Hello there, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, playing as that beautiful Iberian Union. Last time, we had a little bit of an issue with the AAS, the Axencia Intelligence Agency, and trying to put down some terrorists to come. So, like the previous video, I went back and tried a few things out. Now, we saw the CNT FAI disbanded. We have the FSLP disbanded. So now we've got to focus on the ETA and BTA. So I went back, actually, to see how the Axencia or and the AAS corruption type of scandal deal was going on. So I went back and actually got the path instead of what we chose yesterday, where it was actually f almost fully reformed. So right now, we are actually currently unstable. We're not critically unstable, but we're unstable right now with the two biggest factions in my head um, being eliminated. Of course, the ETA is massive. We have 37 resources, which is really good right now. And actually, we might be able to destroy the BTA right now. Okay, I think I might have... Let's see, we're still neutral. Actually, when I did the reforms for the Accentia Agency, and we were and I was successful off-screen with it, it actually reduced our reformism progress, which is kind of interesting. We're still trying to improve Iberia's economy and make everyone hate Salazar. Let's see, and... Oh, yeah, okay, so I must have just done the army offensive against the BTA. That's why they're so low. You know what? Right now, let's go and remove these guys. So... I do apologize, I do want to show like, like everything I do off screen, but every time you see the recording, this is my very first attempt at doing it, so it is what it is. You get my raw input about what I see and what I do, so that's why I like to keep the videos like this. And then maybe go back to see if I can do th something better, maybe, maybe not. But regardless, let's go and destroy the BTA and have a good time with that. Uh, we, I'm not going to raid supplies yet. Let's see. These guys have level 4 six and two which isn't very much that's why i've not done the army offensive against these guys yet and we're almost done with the damn so a couple comments someone wants me to play as greece in this mod tno which i don't know if they have unique focus tree do they no uh, it doesn't look like they have one eventually i will i probably will because i to be honest with you i really really like tno it's become one of my you know kind of favorite mods out there just because even though there's not a lot of warfare the stories they develop are just i love it i love stories so much but I really enjoy TNO as a mod. Um, another comment. Someone's worried that... <clears throat> excuse me. Someone's worried that I will not be able to save the Union. That's why I went back and reformed things a little bit better. Um, so, we'll see. Hopefully we can at this point. It's, it's looking pretty good. We're still doing approved, our last focus here. So, And let's see. Someone also is very, very excited to see what happens when the dam is done. Because I don't even know what the benefits are. I know they're supposed to be pretty good. But... We can invest uh, 90 days, 89 days. We wouldn't be able to get that done. Uh, decrease workers' anger. Uh, that stuff can be all ignored. They're still content. So, once more under the breach. It's been roughly 30 years since the original Australian communist movement has been crushed by Franco and the Foreign Legion, but the embers of revolution still burn. It was these embers which eventually sparked a raging fire, engulfing the forests and hills of Asturias into an unyielding campaign of terror. That era is now over, however. Bitter old miners and workers were no match for our brave AAS agents. After months upon months of sweeping the land, we can safely say that the BTA is no longer a substantial threat. Sympathizer, isolated cells may remain, but this should be the end of them as a cohesive and effective organization. Now that they are now that they are free from both communist propaganda and the threat of violence, perhaps the minds and factories of the North can return to their usual level of productivity. The birthplace of modern Spain shall prosper in safety once more. Whew, you know, sometimes it's always good to go back and check things out, but at this point, we are... Still unstable. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Okay, now we're moderately stable. I love it. So, I guess you just have to wait a day for that to happen. Which is fine with me. We're moderately stable. And we now got to get rid of the ETA, which is... Oiskadi da Ascatasuma. I don't speak Spanish. I am sorry. Now, is that... Is this Asturias up here? Yeah, that's Asturias. I don't know where that one country is, or that one country. They want to be a country, but we're not going to let them be a country. That... ETA group is from. I thought it was Northern Spain. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't remember. Ooh. Saifudian abdicates. Cool. An aristocrat and a gentleman. And now let us go ahead and reduce agricultural subsidies. Worse than the silent opinion. Oh no. The silent majority. Flip flop. Okay. With, when I did the reforms for the AAS and the Exencia, the silent majority really ended up liking us a lot. Now the colonial sailors love us. Love Salazar. And the bureaucrats love Salazar. But it is what it is. Let's go ahead. Ooh. Academic base will get worse. Eh, it won't hurt us that bad, right? It's currently going up by 0.75, so it goes if it goes down by 0.75 or less than that, or technically more than that, 
I'll be okay with that. Cool. And we have been <clears throat> approved. <clears throat> and I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice <clears throat> and warm. Cool. The corrected constitution. The new constitution, or at least a draft of it, has been published. Copies have been printed in every newspaper possible, and nearly everyone in Iberia will have seen it by now. It seems certain that way, based on the stir we've created in the government and without there's been dissent within the government, although it is a, at a level minimal not to be curbed. It is said that a good compromise leaves no one happy. According to our political factions, the Constitution was a good compromise. Some argue it went too far, and some others not far enough, and there are enough of both sides to ensure that there will be an argument for over a long time to come. Sure, this is what it takes, right? The Union will now last forevermore, right? Nagasaki Court signed, bringing peace to Vietnam. Well, good, good job, guys. Good job. The Iberian Economic Miracle. <clears throat> so, our economy is not doing well, that's a fact. However, that fact isn't a set in stone. Surely, with some elbow grease and planning, we can fix the economy, eventually bringing about an Iberian Economic Miracle. Uh, multiple plans on resolving the issues have been proposed. We must simply pick one. Advisors in the Opus Dei visualize a plan to liberalize the economy, but some fear that the drastic change in such, such a short time could cause the Union immediately har immediate harm. Alternatively, we could reintroduce autarky to Iberia, despite concerns from harkening back to the past that could prove ineffective. Finally, Iberia could continue on her current path, making gradual improvements to the system. Ooh. Oh. And we're going to choose immediately. Oh. Or maybe we don't. Huh. <coughs> Interesting. So... Economic liberalization. Honestly, I think that's the way we have to go. Increase national debt, mis uh, miscellaneous costs, and interest rates. Ooh. Limited nationalization. Um, maintain the status quo. Oh, I don't know. You still get liberal democracy with them, though. Oh, man. It will increase money reserves. Build capital, plan economic... Return to, tra tra return to tradition. Return to monk. Uh, yeah, we probably can't take that one. Take inspiration from corporatism. Appease the old guard. Why would we go that way now? That When we've gotten so far. Expand old industry. Build new industry. Then just for Keystone. Alright, Opus Die Appeals. Following the commandment... Uh, commencement of deliberations, various sects of the Iberian Council waste no time in launching their proposals for the economy. The discussions persist with no true progress to display. Bureaucrats continue to take the floor of the Assembly, putting forth nothing but safe and unremarkable economic proposals. As the hours progress, the once-lively atmosphere of the Assembly Hall becomes dull and subdued. The deadlock is finally broken as a senior member of the technocratic wing speaks. Gentlemen, he bellows, our union is strained and our economy lies in, disgra in a disgraceful disarray. Our chosen partners of trade have all but, but for forsaken us, and our abhorrent protectionism impedes any recovery in trade. We dare to attempt to solve our economic concerns alone, but we are failing, gentlemen. The way forward is clear. We cannot solve the economic question. We must implement policies of liberalization. As the man sits, members with ties to the Opus Dei and technocratic blocks rise to their feet and issue an organized and thunderous applause, with many of the more liberal elements of the assembly pitching in. Older elements of the council, however, remain less than enthused. L loud jeers erupt from the opposing wings, and many members shout obscenities towards the opposing side. The commotion finally dies down following several cause calls to order, and the proceedings resume. The Opus Dei continues to put forward detailed plans of economic liberalization, free trade, and a free market economy. They argue that despite the loss of state control over the economic affairs, the increasingly open Iberian economy would be attractive to investors both in Internally and externally. Furthermore, they go to great lengths to outline the benefits of a renewed Iberian presence in international tra trade. After a lengthy discussion, the Opus Dei concludes the proposals. And who's next? So that was over here. Begin in privatizing the INI. Oh boy. And then it resolve regional tax issues. That's not a. Ooh, we go back to low taxation. Hmm. All right. Foreign industrial investments. Rapidly improve industrial expertise, free market participation, and the vestige. Strengthen reformism. We probably want to go that way then. Fight the storm. De appealing for decreased interest rates. That's kind of interesting. Miscellaneous income plus 20. The industrial keystone. Remove Iberian economic nightmare. Huh. Bring Portugal on board. Free up funds. This is all very interesting. I don't know which way to go. Oh, increase GDP growth by a large amount by taking on more debt. I work harder to prosper. So conservative democracy, accelerate. G mm, you know what? Iberian economic miracle. That seems pretty good. And they have the one over here too. Uh, wait. Annual GDP growth factor plus ten percent. What does that one say? Autarky uh, reform as we needed. That's that's kind of mild reform. This is very sharp reforms. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. Who's got the next um, speech they want to give? And I'm still making more military factories 
in the war against the Falangus appeal. Falangus opens dies proposals for substantial reforms favoring liberalization of an, and an open economy. Those opposed spare no time in gathering the response. A prominent leader of the right-wing Falangus takes to the floor and delivers his fiery response. Have the liberals and technocrats been living in a cave for the past two decades? It would certainly seem so, or would they have simply forgotten about what would happen to Iberia if they dared to rely on foreign powers? The lone source for our current disasters is Iberian reliance upon foreigners to protect our nation and to protect our economy. This must end. This can end. Iberia's path to greatness lies inward. We alone shall be the masters of our economic destiny, not the profiteering foreign fat cats. The Assembly Hall erupted into a tumultuous roar as nationalist and right-wing elements applauded the counter to the liberal ideas. As the excited commotion dies down, the Falangists begin to lay out their plan. With a radical emphasis upon autarky and nationalization, the Falangists' proposal outlines an imperial that relies upon itself and itself only, a nation that possesses near unlimited economic control. They argue that the conditions required to bring a to greatness are within reach, and all must do now is reach out and seize our opportunity. Interesting. Cool. And we still can do our focus, which is fine. Expand, uh, expand quarterly funding. Yes. Yes. That's fine with me. And when there, so the Iberian Council waits to come to a statement. The economic debates of the Iberian Council rage on into the final day of deliberations, which had finally begun as a broad spectrum of economic proposals have now split into two camps, those favoring a liberalization and those favoring autarky. A great schism is formed within the assembly, and no solution is in sight. Both camps are fervent in their beliefs and firmly believe that the other camp to be proposing an economic disaster. Tensions run high, and any argument put forth by either side is swiftly met with jeers and counter-arguments. The assembly has stagnated. The Caduceus grow tired of the endless squabbles and jointly agree that the decision must be made now. The assembly is swiftly called to int intermission, and the politicians retreat to their blocks to revise their plans of action. Franco and Salazar exit the assembly chambers to a secluded room in which they begin to deliberate the proposals put forth throughout the assembly. It remains unclear which side the Caduceus will support. The two leaders have thus far only played a role of spectation. The Iberian Council holds its breath. Our future is at stake. A stronger Salazar may improve ac Iberia's economic conditions. Well, we'll see about that. The Indecisive Assembly. Oh boy, the Caduceus agree with a little deliberation that the time has arrived to allow the Ac Iberian Council to vote upon the economic question as is required. The Caduceus emerge from the secluded room and announce to the assembly that the time has come to arrange for a bl binding vote. A majority of the votes will be required to approve the path for reform. A brief intermission is called, and the Caduceus retreat to their respective blocks. Franco and Salazar waste no time in attempting to whip their votes, largely hoping to sway more conservative elements to the cause. Many within these blocks, however, remain unconvinced of voting to appease the Caduceus and plan to vote for the true economic plan which they support. As Franco attempts to exterior conservatives to vote for liberalization, and Salazar attempts to vote votes for his agenda of conservatism, the fate of the economic reform seems uncertain. The time comes to vote, and the deliberative murmur of the assembly dies down. The Caduceus call for the votes to begin. The Opus Dei are the first on the table to, to table the reform, supported by Franco, and in an attempt to secure the most plausible majority vote. The Speaker calls for all those in favor of the proposal to rise. Much to Franco's dismay, a large majority of the conservatives who would appeal to vote for in favor of liberalization refuse to rise. The liberalization reforms grab fail to grab a majority. Next, in defiance of Franco's support for the Opus Dei, the Falangists table their autarky proposal. Without Franco's support, however, the Falangists obtain a pitiful fraction of the vote. Finally, the Salazarian conservatives table their motion for status quo. Once again, a clear minority rises to their feet in favor of Salazar's status quo. The Iberian Council rests, rests, rests at a standstill, with only the Falangists being decisively defeated. With the voting inconclusively drawing onwards into the night, the Caduceus call voting to a close, both of the leaders hoping to able to regroup their support for a later voting date. The nation holds its breath. Cool. Mm, oh no, we I didn't get Salazar's things done. Darn it. Ah, I should not click on that. Now we're going to lose some support of Franco. I was going to worsen everyone's. What the heck? Mm, could do is begin, Franco's begin work on anti-corruption tasks. So it's pushing reforms or programs to restructure previously disloyal and mismanaged parts of the government. Oh boy. So because of this, I assume we have at least one more Salazar event here. Natives, foreign leaders, silent majority, liberal democracy. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do all that stuff. Maybe not, maybe, maybe, maybe not. And we currently have 67 days left. All right, so we can either maintain the status quo or expand Opus Dei influence. Uh, well, Franco wants to reform. He actually really does want to reform. And I like both of these. Accelerate job growth and the vestige. This seems like a bad choice to do. Ooh, national boom. But let's expand the Opus Dei influence. Let's see what happens. Formed shortly before the war by Father Jose Maria Escriva, the Opus Dei is growing like the wind amongst laymen. Despite accusations from the Jesuits, it is a Catholic Freemasonry. Uh, their members are famous for their discipline, obedience, effort, and their principle of the sanctity through labor, which made them highly invested in economics and education, being the founders of the prestigious University of Nevada and the IESE Business School. In our times of economic hardship, the competence of the members could prove extremely useful for the Union. They could serve as efficient cadres of state bureaucracy and be commissioned to develop a modern economic plan for the Iberian recovery 
As Kriva has been trying to meet with the Kadigas for many years, only to be obstructed by more traditional Catholic orders and Orthodox phalangists. Perhaps it's time to grant him an audience. Improves the business opinion of Franco, that's good. And strengthen reformism, which is what we want. Uh, we got economic... Actually, if we go down this way, do we get... If you want like to read that, go right ahead. But you get more political power with the guy you get. But we don't get more reformism. We want to reform, so this is pretty much the path we have to go. And businessmen... Uh, they don't have a preference, so it doesn't matter. Right now, what I'm currently doing is I'm waiting to do this. Because I want to... When I attack them, we're going to lose support, obviously. Romania sets with Italy. My goal is to attack them first and then weaken them. Because right now, we need 58 resources, which is not bad. But I want to attack them first. It's going to lower our stability a little bit. They're probably going to... Uh, they're probably going to attack us a little bit first. It's currently 7. As long as he, it's above 2. Really above 3. Yeah, above 2. So if it's 7, we increase it by 1. It goes down to 6. Costs two resources, though. Ooh. Oh, well, okay. Let's see what happens, though. Alright. Oh, more decisions. Of course, remove incompetent people, but... Mm, I don't know. I mean, this seems all okay. It doesn't seem like it really helps us that much. You get political power? Wow, big deal. We have over 500 political power right now. The GDP growth will decrease? Actually, for this one... Businessmen, I mean, yeah, you get businessmen approval rates, but uh, other than that, we're going to get GDP growth next. <sighs> Market liberalism? No one, we're not really increasing our, the opinion of anyone here, really, except the businessmen. So we might hurt the businessmen, maybe a little bit. Maybe. Oh, yeah, uh, industrial expertise, but that's not, like, opinions. And the vestige? Yeah. Oh, wait, we go to it. Flat taxes. Oh. We remove tax havens. And for Bao Dai abdicates. Communist power sweeped in. Oh. And Vietnam. Oh. Okay, well, good luck with that. Good luck. Join with my cat, Binky, who's enjoying the sunshine. Just sunbathing. Oh, so precious. So precious. Uh, I wish I had a picture on screen to show you, but I do not have one. I don't really don't take pictures of him too much, but sometimes I do. Let's see. Expand the influence. Horizontal. In oh, that's good too. Economic liberalization, decrease or increase debt costs and interest rates. Ooh, let's go with limited nationalization. Capitalism can be a powerful thing, but it also can be stabs in the back, leaving critical industries and business in the hands of businesses may be good for growing them. But in the worst case scenario, it can be dangerous. In order to prevent or to protect and develop industries perceived as being vital to Iberia's competitiveness and defense, such as infrastructure and shipbuilding, and to protect jobs in certain industries, we will nationalize these critical industries with due compensation to the former owners. To the former owners. Like this, we can guarantee a functional war economy should one should worst come to worst, and the guaranteed growth no matter the economic state of the union. Ah, very good, very good. It is 66, so not bad. Not bad at all. Engineering can't do much there. I've been doing more of aircraft stuff, so let's get some close air support. Why not? And we are still building up some more factories, which is fine. Debt 1.4 isn't ideal, but I'm increasing the military size, or the military factories. We got a lot of guns. Like, I, I was really focused on guns quite a bit earlier, so. Uh, let's make sure we can keep that in mind, the state of the council. Yeah, redirect military resources. Yeah, I was focusing on guns. I put everything into guns when I redid this, so. Just because I know we need it. 39 resources this is not bad. We need 60 to get rid of these guys. We are still moderately stable, though. So not bad, not bad. If I get up, just go up by one more level, then I'll do it. I don't mind decreasing the ETA activity and supplies by four, which is awesome. It currently takes cost two resources to decrease that though. This is only a three. If this goes up to like six, I will immediately do it. I'm just sort of waiting first. Hopefully they don't attack anybody or anything. Please don't attack anybody or anything, uh, you bunch of terrorist scum. Uh, let's see anything else here. Not really. Hey, we got more resources, it looks like. 44, not bad. 5.9, that's so close. Just give me one more level, then I'll do this one. We lower our stability by 4. See, now we... I want to wait just until it gets... Just maybe slightly higher. Maybe not. Oh, You know what, let's do it anyways. We're doing it. Army offensives against a goddamn terrorist scum. We can do that, and then we might have enough resources to actually to crush these guys. Especially if we get this within 25 days. That's not bad. Yeah, re doing this off-screen just a little bit and reforming things and reshuffling things around was not a bad idea. Just because I want to make sure that we do okay. 
economic liberalization, distribute the industries. History has proven again and again that the islands of industry on a sea of rurality and backwardness are an ineffective way or an efficient way of industrializing a nation. Iberia suffers the issue. Cities stand as beacons of civilization and a sea of primitive life. The issue must be fixed. A hard job, sure. However, it is to pay off in the long run. A well-distributed industry means evenly distributed and equal development of the Federation. This will be accomplished through a series of subsidies and incentives to build new or expand existing industries in underdeveloped areas of Iberia. The more industrialization or more industrialized a nation is, the better off it will be. Now, let's take a look over here. 3.4, 3.6, 4.9! We are getting close to our annual debt. <gasps> We're done with the dam! The event took place only a day after the dam itself was finished. Even on such a short notice, crowds numbered in the hundreds attended to watch the ceremony, with many television stations recording the event as well. That while there were relatively few people present at the ceremony in prison, just about all of Liberia was watching. The opening ceremony began at noon in front of the building which administered the dam. The door was blocked by a silver sliver of red-colored tape. An expert stood Franco, holding a pair of hedge shears. Salazar delivered a short speech about how Iberia had done what seemed impossible and then beat Germany by finishing their own goddamn construction. Then the tape was cut. With the door open, the two cadillas moved together towards a covered object and the tarp pulled off as they arrived. There were many figures on the statue, many of their stomps coming together to larger, one larger stomping on a smaller man with a swastika across his chest. It was not a particularly large and it was somewhat off to the side. It was only really visible if one looked for it or was being shown. Someone out of view, after a signal from Franco, seemed to activate the statue, and it turns out it was a fountain. Water gently leaked from the pommel of the statue, as well as out of the eyes of the swastika-clad man. A band began to triumphantly play a series of songs. The rest of the celebrations lasted until the late afternoon, only stopping as the sun set. Wow, look at that. We get political power. We remove the spear of the dam, which over here, uh, we get more, plus 15% resources to market, which is good. <clears throat> We get the dam completed, minus 20% consumer goods, plus 10% construction speed. Oh, now we lose 5% resources to market, so be it. This will considerably improve Iberia's stability when we need it the most. Oh, we've gotten our revenge. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe we finally did it. Oh, we're still unstable. I thought we were moderately stable. Oh, then again, we did do the attacks. Oh, that is so nice. How is this looking? 20, 20, 23. Oh, my goodness. That is... Oh, I can't believe we did it. I can't believe we did it. Oh, that's so nice. The dam has finally been completed in 66. Congratulations. Oh, that's so nice. The dam has been completed. That is... That just... That makes you feel happy, even though we're still unstable. God dang it. Uh, it looks like we did the attack. Let's look at the attack. All right. Can we take him out? No, we need 48 resources. Are you kidding me? Oh, no. No. Please. Please don't hurt us. <laughs> ah. Uh, the dam is 100% done. Um, I'm going to assume that this is going to... Maybe once it... Dam payment is done, then this will just go away. It really costs us $181.3 million, which is, you know, whatever. Once we get this one done, in a, within two weeks, we'll be ready to go. I doubt there's anything here for us. Nope. We are currently 53% of the way done. It is great. Actually, that's good we got the dam done after we did the attack on the BT... Excuse me, the BTA. Or is it ETA? I think it's the ETA. Yeah. We got the dam done, and we got the ETA, so it really kind of didn't do too much for us, but that's okay. 49... Oh. 49. 40. Oh, we need, 50, what, we need 50 now? Seriously? Seriously? Uh, but you know what? That's okay, because now apparently we might have 50, 56. There we go. Cool. Come on. Oh. <gasps> Oh, boy, I'm so glad I redid this so we can actually be successful here. Oh, look at that. ETA. And, come on, come on. Vasconia de Lenda Est. <clears throat> the Basques as a whole are a hardy and stubborn people. For those of them who dedicated their lives to rebellion, this is doubtly true. The ETA have been far and away the most effective terrorist active group in Iberia, killing hundreds and bombings and armed attacks over the course of the campaign. However, we can now rest easy as the AAS has finally secured the last other mountain bases in the Basque country. Months have passed since we began to push back the ETA in the earnest. Their martial capabilities almost matched those of the AAS, and it was only with military assistance that the terrorists were defeated in open battle. But for the, all their ferocity, they lacked the manpower and popular organic support to withstand our relentless assaults. Their victory is cause for celebration. There are many questions that remain unanswered. Primarily, the question of their material support. The ETA never enjoyed widespread support among the population of their homeland, and the amount of hardware at their disposal was suspiciously high for a terrorist organization. For now, though, perhaps we should be content to sit on our laurels and enjoy peace in the Basque country. I hope we've seen the last of them. Considerably improve Iberia stability. Beautiful. And actually, let's show you the factories. Like, I, I'm at 20 factories. Like, we're making a buttload of guns. Actually, I've been making a lot of factories. Because even we have five factories for tanks, too, now, which is not bad. Really not bad. 
Uh, that one's almost done. Let's keep making up some more civilian factories. And we're doing more industry as well, so. One, two, three, four. Full lines of production. That is so good. Ooh. Gibraltar Dam payment. I mean, yeah, that's good and all, but I don't think anyone cares. Well, they're done within a month. Uh, the growth, though. Oh, 4.9. That's so nice. Distribute the industries. Plan the expansion. Increase pure GDP as an effect of our earlier reforms. Combine with the plan expansion. Increase miscellaneous costs. Let's do economic liberalization plan. Escriva was extremely pleased with his audience in Madrid. The power the meeting proved fruitful for both sides, and as he intent on expanding his influence on the Iberian government and use it as a step to reach Rome, and we need the support of the members of the order to reform our economy. A kitchen cabinet was assembled by top economic professors in the country and high level managers in the large companies, all Opus Dei members, to study the hindrances of our economic growth and keep us and what is keeping us stagnant. Also named technocrats, those these advisors found out after weeks of work that the Iberian economy is being kept down by a large number of bureaucratic locks and inefficient practices, and we will be devising a plan to liberalize the economy and regain growth, which will be our first plano de asalo economico y social. Oh god, I can't speak Spanish. Go and cut spending, which doesn't matter too much. Uh, I might lower construction, but I, I want to get through at least all the infrastructure plans first. Oh boy, we got a lot of build. Keep building, guys. You're doing a great job. I'll even build in my puppets areas just so that they can get some benefits, too. If we build up more roads, I, I, I guess that, that doesn't really do much for us. Because uh, you don't get, like, more GDP. You don't get... You technically, you do get more con more quick quick construction times, which would be nice. This is still demilitarized, actually. Huh. But I don't know. I kind of wish it was more of a benefit to building roads, but that's just me. Cool. Uh, naval supports. Marines. We don't have any Marines. So we'll go, go with air support, because we can. Great. Great, 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 great. And now, I love guns. Like, as an American, we all love guns. Probably, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I could use more tanks. APC's not looking bad. Well, we're doing pretty well. We could use more casts, though. So I'm going to lower the amount of guns that we're making. Yeah, we definitely need more casts. Jet casts not looking bad. We actually do have a carrier, too, so. We're doing actually pretty darn well. Pretty darn well, I'd say. Go and put two more on here. Let's go with five. There you go. Decrease the gun amount. We're making 117 a day. So good. Like, that's so good. So much political power right now. Stabilizing Iberia. Not going to do that. Zero days. Let's see. Will this go away or... No? Oh, I don't like that. This... I mean, it's obviously going to cost us money to keep the dam going all the time, but... Happy 1967, my friends. It's a new year for us. It's going to be a new great time, hopefully. Hopefully, things won't go too poorly. We've done a pretty good job. Our current deficit is 1.16. That's not bad. But we have economic liberalization, so see what happens. Uh, let's see. This decreased miscellaneous cost. Remember market liberalism. What is our miscellaneous cost right now? Miscellaneous costs. Other expenditures. Eh, that's not bad. Plan the expansion. Let's do that one first. The technocrats will begin planning the expansion of our civilian goods economy. What differs this plan of the previous autarchic plans is that the most of the production of these goods will be in the hands of private enterprises instead of the state, who will in turn enforce the plan of indirectly through subsidies, regulations, and loans will go to the goals like production, em employment, and investment. Some are beginning to call the system indicative planning. Oh, things are just looking up for us now. Things. Uh, 1.2 uh, 4 billion in deficit. So be it. I mean, our GDP is looking already pretty good. We have our deficit to income ratio is 11.8. Not bad. Just not bad at all. So if we make more factories, it's 1.24 billion. And we just got those factories done. It went down to 1.14. So it, I guess technically the civilian factory is like half a billion dollars. That's not bad. Jet fighters. Keep making more though. I love making civilian factories. I don't know why. I, I have a problem. I know. I do, I do know I have a problem. I just like building them so much. You know what? Might as well grab it. Advanced drop tanks? Why not? It finally feels like Spain is coming along. <sighs> At this point, it seems like things could probably still go poorly for us. But it feels like... It seems like... It feels like it seems like... when you, It's similar to when you play as a Russian warlord. Where things are actually finally looking up. Like, we're actually finding success. We're finding progress. We're finding good things coming out of the, our endeavors. Or, and our adventures. If you need a train, go right ahead. Uh, we got... We even have a new tank division. Look at that. We actually have some tank divisions. Oh, you're still over there, huh? You know, as much as I love these guys, I don't love you that much. Uh, cool. Yeah. Cool, guys. Just gonna do that. We actually made more tanks. Actually, that should have... We made a tank division, but then we d got rid of other divisions. The IFVs. Which actually... Oh, Wales unifies with England. Oh. 
reunified. Uh, was it voluntary? I didn't see any war. Hey, it was peaceful. Yeah, it was peaceful. Look, not bad. Not bad. Let's go to technocratic means of administration. Instituto de Estudios Superiores de la Empresa. And Instituto Superior de Secretariado e Administración in Nevada are both high tier facilities maintained by the Opus Dei with aims of educating mid and high level administrators in a rational and scientific form of management called technocracy. Graduates from these institutions can be can be excellent human resources for our administration. We just start replacing the old and lazy bureaucrat with a young and competent technocrat. Cool. Very cool. Keep building, guys. You're doing a great job. 20, 20, 20, 20, 15. We still have a lot of infrastructure to get through. Uh, to be honest, like every almost like every campaign I play, infrastructure in my mind just has to get done. It just has to get done. Actually, can I add more money to the dam? <laughs> Why would I do that? <laughs> just because we can. The current budget allocated for the dam is 15 million. Not bad. Yeah, I don't see the point to do this stuff over here. Stabilizing a, a period. I mean, I don't want his popularity to go down because the military leans toward Franco. They're not fully in support of Franco, but they lean toward him. Franco has support, some support from intellectuals, the colonial natives, and the silent majority, while the colonial settlers and the bureaucrats are fully Salazar aligned. So be it. Actually, the bureaucrats are fully Salazar aligned because I combined the AAS with the military to, to degree, just to make sure we could root out any sort of corruption, which really was helpful, which I should have done before, so. It is what it is. <clears throat> Alright, BB, bye-bye. And Binky's left my room. 53 out of 100, not bad, not bad. 1.32 billion. Good lord, they're just doing so well on this stuff. Probably too well, maybe. Maybe, maybe too well. Maybe, maybe not. Galicia, why not? Oh, actually, no, we'll do it down here, since... It's not bad. Keep building up those roads. Build, 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 build. Actually, since we got space and time, we can probably build some synthetic refineries. I know I don't have to do this, but we can get more rubber, and rubber is always nice to get, right? Always get rubber or use it. Begin privatizing the I and I. The Institution Nacional de Industria uh, was our state-owned financing and industrial holding company established in '41, following our old model state-owned industry for economic and social control of the population. This hasn't been exa exactly very effective, with some failings such as. Adasa Aircraft Company, and quite a bit of successes like Anasa, Seat, and many other companies. However, these companies aren't being run very well by the government. Time has proven that the private ownership helps the growth of companies, and that's what exactly what we need, growth. As such, a purposely slow privatization progress will begin by giving up individual companies under the INI regime to private buyers. With this, we hope these companies will experience said growth. It must be said that this is somewhat of a gamble, as we're not sure if these companies will actually grow. Time will tell. We lose political power, remove economic Iberian, Iberian economic nightmare, Less authoritarian democracy, improve the business opinion, businessman opinion of Franco, decrease costs, increase money reserves, and increase GDP growth. Cool. We'll see what happens. I mean, we got enough political power. I don't really care. So, oh, Angola has defeated. Oh, the people's moving in Angola. Okay, well, good luck with that. Or at least you already did that. So, good, good, good. Uh, we're done here then, I guess for now. Not bad. Heavy aircraft. We're not really doing that. We can grab some of this. So, if we really want it, spy planes would be kind of cool. But we don't really need that. Naval doctrines? Oh, we forgot about the naval doctrines. 1960s. Subs. Carriers. Well, I guess we can do some carriers, because we can, because why not? Maybe we should stop producing outdated carriers. Better casts? Don't mind if we do. Do we have any carriers again, maybe? Or maybe just... I don't think we're making destroyers. Let's see. Hey, look. There's a carrier. It's not great. But we already have one carrier, so how about another? Oh, everyone's training. Go ahead and train if you need it. I don't want you to train just to train. I want you to train if you need it. And, of course, we still only have six subs. But you know what? The Navy isn't a huge issue for us right now. Hopefully, we don't need to use it. But we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Let's see. I guess, technically, with a dam right now... Ooh, military officer. We probably still want to cut that. I could probably replace a person because the workers aren't being used anymore. Replace a damn chairman. Brandon, the da hmm, I don't know why that still pops up. Cool. Let's see, 1.35, still not bad. Cut it by 0.1 billion. It's not very much. Not gonna lie. It's okay though. Actually, four point. So, oh, the debt went up by 6.4. Oh, 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 no, that, oh, that's painful. That's painful. That's okay though. Keep building. Keep building. You're doing a great job. We're doing a great, great job. In a week, we'll begin privatizing the INI and remove. Iberian Economic Nightmare, which is this one right here. So we get better annual GDP growth factor. Nice. Miscellaneous income goes up. And more taxable population. I love taxing the population. I love it. Uh, since we're here in the Navy, we can do infantry stuff later on. We're getting the carriers done. We could get better subs. 
Destroyers actually looking not too bad. That's actually really good. Destroyers and frigates and corvettes. Cruisers. Uh, I think it's probably a little bit too late for us to do cruisers, so we'll maybe make some more destroyers then, maybe. I almost never go with destroyers. We'll see what we can do with them. Battleships, early cruisers, uh, frigate threes. I guess frigates are considered screens for the battleships. What is this? Huh. You know, I guess we could make them if we really wanted to. Anti-war, rapid fire guns, light battery ones. Yeah, we don't really have that many different things here. Fire control ones, that would be good. Radar is always good to do. This seems like we already have everything that we could possibly put on here. Ooh, better engines though, that would be very nice. Rear? Wait, hold on. That is... Oh, anti-air. Oh, uh, I kind of don't mind anti-air, actually. Anti-air 4. Anti-air 4. Do we have enough? Yes, we do. 14. Not bad. And this is... Yeah, anti-air. Cool. Oh, those are two naval guns. Oh, uh, you know what? Do some death charges, too. Just to get, in case we find subs, which we probably want, want to reuse them. That's not bad, actually. Even though we don't have the dockyards for them. That's still okay. Cool. And expand foreign trade. Eh, relax protectionist tariffs. Decrease miscellaneous income and import growth. Yes. Our union imposes heavy in restrictions on imports, making the import of every kind of good very expensive and bureaucratic with the justification of being a protective measure for our national industry. The fact show it's quite the opposite. Foreign industry is being armed with the most advanced capital goods with, our, with ours. Without access to imports and dependent on local pr products, it is stagnant. And the only way we can win this feud is if we relax our protection of tariffs and allow our companies to start importing high-tech foreign capital goods like computers and power tools, therefore increasing their productivity. Cool. And the next one we could choose... Eh, foreign trade is okay. Oh, actually, we get better relations with pretty much everyone in the world. That's kind of nice. Atlantic Dockyards, we get more dockyards, which we could actually use, and our industrial equipment begins to improve, which is not bad either. All right, so let's take a look at this, because we have Apple Forms. We actually have liquid reserves, less than a billion in cost. Wait, we have liquid... Oh my gosh, look at that. Liquid reserves, 3.52 billion. <gasps> look at that growth, 8.2. Oh, I want to cut down to the debt with 3.52 billion. I want to cut it down, but I've got to invest it. At this point, oh, 3.6. Oh my goodness. Actually, that raised our debt up a little bit more. Our deficit, I mean. Now we, our gr GDP is growing faster than our debt. Oh, that is so nice to see. So here on out, my goal is to reduce the deficit as fast as possible, but we're still going to be building things as much as possible. Let's see. Uh, when are you going to be done? Peace conference is over. Oh, who's at war? Thailand. Oh, okay, Thailand is. You guys are not even really close. Can I tell you guys... Are you guys actually training, or... I wish you could, like, tell these guys to selectively train. That'd be kind of nice. But whatever. I don't really care. It gives us more... Naval experience. Wow, look at that air experience. Wow, why do we have so much air experience? Oh, is it because I was training these guys? It might have been. Hey, that's pretty nice, regardless. Actually, if I increase the Air Force, does that increase the... Cost for the military? It seems like it should. But maybe, maybe not. Basic jet... Uh, interceptors. I don't want to be tempted with bad stuff... Uh, so well, it's not even bad stuff. I just don't. I don't know anything about interceptors. Oh boy, a little bit of lag. Don't crash because I clicked on interceptors. I know I shouldn't destroy this stuff, but whatever. Okay, there's a little bit of lag. It must be Thailand, probably. Cool. And let's go do Atlantic dockyards. Portugal, Galicia, and Andalusia. Andalusia demonstrate a potential for hosting larger shipyards capable of producing large cargo ships, oil tankers, and perhaps a few destroyers. Portugal especially holds an experienced naval tradition, therefore making them an important shipbuilding hub, hub is only appropriate, and not to mention it will most likely please them a lot. Lisbon Shipyard Lisnava is something. We're going to make Portugal great again. And Galicia. And Asturias. And Leon. Yes. Anything else? Stabilizing? Yeah, why not? Actually, we can actually do some of this stuff here. If we do the one that has colonial settlers and bureaucrats, might as well audit for mismanaged funds, I guess. Since they already don't like Franco that much. We might as well, right? Actually, I thought those demilitarized zones. It is not. Workers protest for tariffs. Today, Madrid. Oh, boy. Thousands of farmers have joined in a protest on the streets outside the Iberian Council Chambers for a third straight night. The issue that joins these farmers in protest is a recent announcement by Franco, detailing government plans to ease and lift tariffs on all economic sectors. The government states that the continued abolishment of the tariffs will encourage the international market to engage with Iberia and will spur economic investment into the Iberian economy over the long term. The farmers, however, remain unconvinced. Furthermore, the farmers are, are not alone in the protest. Many employed from these manufacturing industries have also turned up to express their displeasure with the removal of tariffs, arguing that the influx of cheaper foreign imported goods will force Iberian industries to make layoffs and might even entice local industries to emigrate. The good news put my livelihood at risk. My family has now, for eight generations, survived off our humble farm, but now cheap imported tariff-free foods will soon flood the store shelves. 
How are we going to compete when we can hardly sell my produce? Question of Reyes Gallego. He inherited his family farm just like outside of Madrid two decades ago, but like many Iberian farmers in recent months, he's been struggling to make ends meet. When if Iberian consumers likely to prefer the cheaper imported goods in stores, many farmers such as Mr. Gallego question how they will remain afloat. The good news have yet to make any comment on the protests as liberalization measures continue to be passed. Government spokespersons have, however, stated that the Iberian administration remains enthusiastic about the economic opportunities that will be presented with increased liberalization. Cheaper goods, you say? The growing discontent for other Iberian people will strengthen reformism in the council. Okay. This is going to work. What's our stability? What the heck? Oh, there goes the Congo. It kind of exploded, which is fine with me. But I don't really care. Um, Well, I guess the silent majority is mostly Franco aligned still. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, sometimes when... Franco's still technically the leader. But if there's a complete, like, perfect balance between Salazar and Franco support, you actually get the Iberian council, which is kind of cool. So, uh, let's see. So in our modules? Sure, why not? Uh, you know what? Infantry train. I want some more army XP so we can edit some of these divisions maybe a little bit more. 3 point... Oh, point zero seven a day almost. Almost that much a day. That's not bad. This is all for progress. And when if... Okay, so with everyone progressing together, it'll be harder for everything to crash. But when it does crash, oh, it's going to be a terrible crash for everyone in the world. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Let's see. We do get a little bit more rubber, which we don't really need. We get a slight bit more fuel. Just a slight bit more. Daily gain minus 52. That's kind of okay for now. Earlier carrier holes. Very cool. Atlantic dockyard. Let's grab some of this. Resolve t regional tax issues. Ooh. More political power. More stability. More construction speed. Income rate. Let's go expand foreign trade. The IESC studies show that the Iberian market is not large enough for sustainable economic growth over a long period of time. Knowing this fact, Iberian economic agents should start expanding their presence in international markets so they would have a larger consumer base and more diverse sources of income. Iberian companies will be forced to increase their efficiency and develop a comparative advantage so they can survive global competition. What will, of course, in turn benefit the average Iberian consumer as increased efficiency and scaling by the producer will lead to cheaper and better quality goods. Let's at least hope so. And so anti-sub rocket launchers. Whoa! That sounds really wicked. Really, really awesome, actually. Cool. Alright, so next up, we need the one that are colonial settlers don't like us. So, the majority. Uh, worse than the natives' opinion? No. Restructure the colonial administration. Yeah, why not? We might as well. They don't like us already, so. Who cares? 1.18. Not bad. Not bad. And are you going to be done yet soon with... Yeah, okay. Oh, we must be trading our planes. That's what's up. Yeah. Some of these are... These guys are getting getting done. These, especially these guys. Strength. Uh, Yeah, you're training, right? Yeah. Trained? Oh, maybe not. Hold on. We're losing... Hmm. We're losing fuel. But the planes aren't training. Ships aren't training. How are we losing fuel then? Daily gain from refineries. Uh, hmm. I guess we throw another one on because we can. And after this, we'll probably build up a nuclear reactor because why not? You know what? Let's do it at the same time. We'll put it. Ooh, I do not want to put it on the coast. But we'll do it anyway. Why not? Yes, build up a nuclear reactor. We, Iberia, can become nuclear. We got 40 days left. Expand foreign trade and foreign industrial investments. As we begin to implement our economic modernization, foreign investors begin to take greater note of us. Our cheap workforce and land, coupled with a developed heavy industrial base, has caught the eyes of the global automobile manufacturers. Ford has already begun, be begun building a plant in Valencia, Nissan is buying up land and laying foundations in Barcelona, and even Mercedes-Benz, despite the government's cold relations with Iberia, is considering opening a factory in Alava. Cool. That'd be great. Nope. <laughs> Alright. Oh, we still don't make any casts. Tactical bombers. Oh, yeah, I guess we could use tactical bombers, too. Guns looking too good. That, that's just too good, man. Uh, I could probably build some dockyards, but mm, we'll see. Okay, we're doing better on jet fighters. We still don't have, have no factories down there. Artillery-wise, we're doing okay. Let's lower by another five. So now we actually have good fuel, good to that. France sides with Italy. A move most were expecting, yeah. Especially if they get beat up by Burgundy and basically the German puppet. You kind of can see that coming. We have eight army XP. Nice. Now we're improving jet casts. Okay, that's good. That's really good, actually. Finally. All right, so we got eight army XP. Like I said, these guys are okay. These guys are 15 combat with. So let's throw on another thing of artillery. Make these guys just a little bit stronger. Artillery-wise, we went down a little bit. Uh, we could probably actually improve that by a wee bit. Ooh, manpower is not looking great. We only get less than 100 a month. Wow, that's not that's not good. <laughs> but nevertheless, it'll be okay. 
Jet fire is still lacking quite a bit. Carriers looking pretty good. Basic attack subs looking pretty good. Industrial foreign advancements, great. And resolve the regional tax issue. The Iberian tax code is a bureaucratic nightmare. Incorporating the jurisdictions of both Portugal and Spain while trying to establish a new tax authority at the federal level is clearly not working. This troubles Iberian corporations who have need who have the need of keeping large accounting and legal departments to deal with the issues that will certainly appear, forcing the companies to spend huge amounts of human and financial resources with support activity while making their products more expensive and dealing with double taxation, all this situation scares off a lot of foreign investors. The state also has trouble dealing with the tax code's comp complexity of the laws and a number of loopholes cause a serious loss of income through tax evasion and corruption by the hands of more connected businessmen, and the cost of maintaining a manpower-heavy bureaucratic is dragging down our fiscal situation. The Iberian tax code will be discarded and replaced with a modern, efficient, comprehensive legislation at federal, regional, and city levels, with aims of easing and doing a business, making impossible tax evasion. Cool. And sonars? Why not? Why not? Good. So we got that. We could go there, but we'll wait. Destroyer threes are looking pretty good. Uh, anything else? Yes, better light batteries. Since we're going to make destroyers now, I think that's a, an appropriate thing to do. Uh, air land strikes, very cool. Let's keep going and do a vertical envelopment. Even though we're not using air assault stuff, so be it. It's still good to do. Anything else here? We already did the bureaucrats. We already did the settlers. I don't want to hurt anyone else's opinion of Franco. Which should be good. And we're still building stuff up. Good. We're getting another refinery. Just so we get a little bit more fuel. I know we could buy some fuel from the United States. But, mm, I want Iberia to be, at least, in industry-wise, okay by ourselves. We could use some more steel, though. We could buy one. We'll buy some, one steel. Increase relations with Americans. And we'll buy, including, one aluminum. I could always use my puppet as a base to get stuff from them. But I don't want to do that. Just because I don't want them to get too uppity about independence and stuff like that, you know. They don't need independence. Nah. Let's see. So these guys are missing their aluminum. That's what's really costing us some here. Gun-wise, it's still okay. Death of Emperor. Actually, for this, we can probably drag you to the bottom. Since we don't need to steal that much right now, we're still making 26 a day. Uh, if I actually did that... Eh. I'll put you like there. There you go. And the tax code. We still need more resources, though. So be it. Free market participation. In order to proceed with our economic revitalization and reform our place on the world stage, we must open our borders with free trade and the free market. By allowing our products to be sold outside our borders and be exported, by importing foreign goods, not only can we improve our people's living conditions with some luxuries, we can also make the Made in Iberia label known as a symbol of quality and qu qu affordable worldwide. Nice. Very nice. Uh, we have another tank. Ready to go. Great. Oh, of course, we're only making one tank division at a time. Alright, alright. I'll go ahead and grab just a thing more fuel. Just one more thing of fuel. There we go. That should help us out massively. Yeah, that really does help out. Daily gain 307. Not bad. Alright, so after the last reforms, deficit is 3.23 billion. But we got more growth, which is nice. So, Alright, so now we're going to run out of manpower. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say no to that. We're not going to make any divisions for now. Because we'll at least have the infantry doing okay. 20 combat width is the bare minimum that we need for these guys, so that'll be okay. Low. I haven't even set this stuff up. You know what? I've not even done intelligence agency stuff yet in TNO. Let's create an agency. Rook. Uh, I guess we can't. We don't have that many options. If you think of a cool name for intelligence agency, let me know. Because I don't know much about Spanish intelligence. But it'd be kind of cool if we had something kind of unique. Something special. Still leans towards Franco. That's good. GDP. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, we gotta get rid of that deficit. Uh, I probably will lower c c civilian construction speed, but or spending, but civilian spending is probably what we gotta look at. Good. And the vestiges. We're strengthening reformism. Decrease miscellaneous costs. Negotiate fiscal policy. Remove tax havens. Ooh, do we really want that? Tax havens? Ooh, where's tax havens? Gibraltar Dam is gonna be completed. Uh, I guess we don't have tax havens anymore. The terrorists have been dealt with, too, so... Hmm. Yeah, re negotiate federal policy. Efforts at the highest level of government have been made to finally resolve an issue that has been plaguing the financial stability of Iberia since its, in con since its conception. The uneven, decentralized tax system. Despite Salazar's initial protest, it seems like a forced consensus was pushed at the most recent council meeting. A radical but comprehensive sense of tax reform could that, w could, that would neither prioritize any region of Iberia with tax relief, nor levy an unfair amount of other regions to cover the lost revenue. The reform will create a basic tax rate for the whole of Iberia, with extra spending being reserved for less economically strong parts of our nation, to bring them to the same level as the rest of the federal nation, along with the easing administrative duties. Increasing tax collection efficiency and revenue will also foster a better unity and solidarity uh, amongst our people with this reform. 
We go all the way down to flag taxes. That kind of sounds painful, to be honest with you, but whatever. 3.3. Oh, that's not good. Hey, 10.7%. Look at that. Even though this is 6.4%, that is nice. That is very, very nice. Even though, of course, I'm still increasing the size of our military. It is what it is, you know. I just want a, I just want a good military. Mass layoffs cause unrest. Oh, crap. Demonstrations in cities across Siberia enter us. Tens of thousands of unemployed workers take to the streets across Siberia. Following radical liberalization policies favored by Opus Dai and the technocrats within the Iberian Council, many manufacturers have laid off their workers, setting an inability to compete with the influx of terrorist free foreign goods. As the demonstrations continue to grow in size as well as intensity, <clears throat> violence has become inevitable. Last night in Barcelona, altercations between protesters and police escalated. Following several hours of clashes, the city of Barcelona reports that seven police officers were injured as well as 58 protesters, with one police officer currently in critical condition. <clears throat> As unemployment continues to rise, many call for the repeal of free trade measures and reintroduction of tariffs. Several industry leaders have criticized the Cadillos for what they call a brazen, radical, and irresponsible approach to economic liberalization. The Cadillos, however, show no indication at halting these efforts, as they continue to further liberalization programs. As a result of the, of the continual demonstrations, Opus Dei have released a brief public statement, which reads, The public may rest assured that any and all measures of economic liberalization which have been proposed and conducted within recent months have been carefully considered. Many methods currently being deployed within Iberia are tried and proven methods, in which we place our fullest confidence. The temporary setbacks currently experienced are to be expected with such radical shift, but we're sure that the public that soon Iberia shall reap the benefits of a prosperous and free economy. Worse than majority opinion of Franco, less market liberalism li market liberalism support, and anger towards the government will strengthen reformism in the council and worsen our stability. Oh, god dang it. Uh, is there anything I can do about this? We are unstable right now. Just don't become critically unstable. I don't know if there's anything I can do to improve stability, except go through these policies as fast as humanly possible. Fight the storm. Um, that doesn't even help us. Oh, crap. Uh, how do I get more stability? Got this. Oh my goodness, that's a that's a lot. Hey, we created the agency. Look at that. Kind of cool. And since we've been developing this up for quite a bit of time, let's go ahead and do passive defense. <clears throat> you never know what the Germans are up to. And let's do. Oh, we can't even do that yet. Oh wow. Uh, better maybe advanced secondary batteries because we can. Why not? We could have put those new things on our ships, but I don't really care at this point. We'll research stuff as best and as fast as possible. Hopefully, we can get through this without too many issues. And I want to read at least one more focus before the end of today's episode. Ooh. Oh, Nega, it looks like a demilitarized zone, huh? Uh, looks like things have been pretty common in Russia. Cheetah. Oh, my goodness. That is a thick cheetah. Mikhail II. Aren't you the guy that was, like, was forced to become, like, leader or Tsar? Huh. Alright, cool, whatever. Got a hundred more manpower, but goodbye, manpower. And negotiate federal policy, independence for the UAE. Okay. The greatest story never told. We'll read that after we do the last focus for the episode. And the message. Despite our numerous and visionary reforms, some members of the government still try to resist the inevitable. They have often rallied around a group of old shirt figures with enormous influence on our administration, na named the Fortress, that seek to enact extreme opposition to any measures we could take. We should end this message of the past if we wish wish to keep marching to the right direction. Luckily, we found a chink in the purchase's walls. Many of the former members are known to be take, take advantage of the locked bureaucracy of our state for their own benefit, meaning an anti-corruption campaign will be enough to remove their most troublesome members. Good. So, the greatest story never told. A rather interesting alternate history novel has been gaining some attention around the world, perhaps for all the wrong reasons. The greatest story never told, released two days ago, self-published by Sir Bodian Clefton Dixie, almost certainly a pen name, with a hand-drawn cover which some criticize as a crude drawing of the tank with a Dixie flag rolling over a Nazi flag with a hammer and sickle instead of a swastika, with a thought balloon coming out of George Lincoln Rockwell's head. The novel is a strange ramble about how if Rockwell hadn't been assassinated by the Judeo Bolshevists, he would have created the greatest story in mankind's history, and goes on to blame his death for Jews being afraid of what truths he could write. The novel's garnered attention, all doing to Due to its bizarre tone, it claims such as Nazi Germany as being a Judeo-Bolshevist bastion, due to it being led by a party who is socialist, therefore, before it is nationalist. And many others' astonishing claims, which are surprisingly comedic, hence its widespread success in the U.S. and abroad. I never thought I could laugh like this. Oh, good lord. Oh, my goodness. And, you know what? Maybe I lied. 2.6 billion? That's not bad. Let's get through this last message, and then the next focus is what we'll finish with. As long as there's no other events. Because this video has gone on for almost 50... over 50 minutes long, which is fine with me. It's just... Sometimes these videos go on very long. But that's TNO in general. If you don't spend a lot of time with TNO, you're not really playing TNO correctly. At least in my opinion. Cool. I mean, look at all this. This looks amazing. Some more civilian factories. Def defensive passive upgrades. Burgos went out. Civilian factories, because he can. Get an agency. Lucas Roberts. Unnamed. Bob Taylor. These all sound like very Hispanic names. Very Hispanic. Lucas? Is it? Is that some, hmm. Modernize the department. That'd be good. GDP, GDP, GDP. Not bad, not bad, not bad. I'm considering slashing civilian spending now. Mm. But construction speed goes on by 10%. Maybe construction speed. Even though, even then, 
Actually, you know what? Let's try it. Let's see what happens when we do cut civilian spending. Because it's 7.8 billion of the civilian spending. If I cut out, what is it? 15%? Okay, it reduces it by 1.1. That's not bad. That's really not bad at all. Stabilizing Iberia. Not too much else. And, and the vestiges, and we shall conclude with fighting the storm. Our widespread structural reforms aimed at tackling the fundamental issues of our economy are beginning to bear fruit. The technocrats in charge of the fiscal policy and nationalized industries have brought both prosperity and unity. Where there increased st st stimulation of the consumer and military industries coupled with the opening of our markets to foreign direct investments, we've also had to create solutions for the inflammatory storm that comes with greater economic activity. A storm that could have similar terrible consequences for a booming economy as a brewing European storm. A central Iberian bank has been established to deal with any possible inflation ramifications. Of course, this too will be guided by wise and modern technocratic methods. Cool. And we shall end our episode there. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow as we shall weather the storm, whatever it may be, in the next one. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.